In this video, uh, I'm going to talk about degreeing camshafts uh, and two and four valves. It's the same principle for any uh, engine. Yeah, you, what, what it is that you're doing is you're trying to control the event of the valves, when the valves open, when the valves close, in relation to what the piston is doing. So, piston is going down, valve is opening up during the intake stroke, it's coming back up, closes, exhaust. So, when this is operating, when this is opening and closing, is what you're trying to control by degreeing the camshaft in there. You get this wrong, and you get piston to valve contact. We don't want that. So there's a couple different ways uh, that people can do this and the videos after this, I'm gonna show you how I do a four valve 4.6 and a two valve 4.6. I have a couple engines lined up that need uh, to degree the camshafts and uh, I'll show you how I do it. Now, there's a little bit of, uh, everybody's got their own kind of way of doing it. Some are a little more precise and they have a bunch of uh, things that they want to do and uh, they want to get it within like a quarter degree and they'll put tension here and tension there to try and get it exact um, so there's going to be different ways that people say uh, they do uh, degree camshafts so before I get into my presentation uh, which I drew out on some paper because I don't have a whiteboard here uh, I like to use a whiteboard to go over demonstrations of stuff uh, but I, I drew it on some printer paper in the office and, and uh, we'll go in there in just a second and I'll try to explain in more detail on what it is that you're doing. Uh, but before we do that, I, I, I don't know if, uh, if it's just my opinion or if uh, there's uh, other people that agree with me, but I don't think it needs to be exact. I don't think it needs to be like uh, a quarter degree. If I get it within one degree, I try to get it within one degree. Uh, but I don't get all into, you know, putting a bunch of tension here, put a bunch of tension there. And when we get, when we discuss it in a little more detail, uh, maybe you'll agree with me. Maybe you won't agree with me. Uh, feel free to add some comments below and, and we can discuss it. Uh, but I have seen, I have seen some engine builders take the recommended center line from, uh, the cam manufacturers and they'll advance it or retard it to try and put the power band in, uh, in a certain spot within the RPM of that engine. Um, so if you're retarding or advancing as much as four degrees, uh, I, maybe, it, maybe it doesn't need to be within a quarter of a, of a degree from what the manufacturer recommends. But that's just my opinion on it. One thing I will say is that uh, it's pretty important to make sure that you have the correct valve spring pressure for the, the uh, cams that you're using, uh, especially on the exhaust side. Um, it, you want to have good good valve springs. All right, let's take a walk inside the office and uh, I'll show you my drawings. Try not to laugh. Okay, here it is. Uh, I took uh, I took a little bit, took about, uh, to be honest, it probably took about a half hour to draw these out uh, because I want to be able to demonstrate what is happening inside the engine and why we degree the camshafts, why we want to degree the camshafts if you choose to do so. So I have a couple sheets here. I have one for the intake stroke and I have one for the uh, exhaust stroke. Uh, obviously there's four strokes to the internal combustion engine that we're talking about, uh, but we're, gonna, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna be concerned with the compression stroke and the power stroke because those two strokes, both the valves are closed the entire time, so it doesn't matter. So let's take a look at the intake stroke. Uh, these are the camshaft, quick rundown of my drawing here. These are the, the camshaft lobes. These are the valves. This is the piston. Uh, and of course it goes down to the crank. And at the top of the intake stroke, you can see that the intake valve is about to open and the exhaust valve has already uh, started to close. So this is, you're going to have overlap right here. At the at top dead center of intake stroke, you're going to have both valves are going to be open a little bit if you have overlap on your camshaft. So as the piston travels down, the intake opens up further. Uh, and in, in this case, the valve is going to be chasing the piston down. At, when it reaches the bottom, intake valve almost all the way open. And somewhere in between there is it's going to be wide open. And we'll talk about uh, the center line, which I have down here. 
uh, when we do the uh, when we talk about that. On the exhaust side, we're going to start from bottom dead center, uh, and the piston is going to travel up. And now the exhaust is open. The exhaust valve is open. You can see it's on the on the lobe here, and the piston is going to chase uh, the exhaust valve closed. So uh, you don't want you don't want the piston to catch up to your valve as it's on the exhaust stroke. And then obviously at top dead center, uh, it begins, it, you have your overlap again, uh, and the intake begins to start over. So it's actually gonna go, these are gonna be the, 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 the procession of the piston. So it's gonna travel from bottom dead center to top dead center, and then you're gonna be at top dead center on the intake stroke, and then from there it's gonna go back down. So these are actually gonna be somewhat like this. Okay, so we'll talk about the intake stroke first and setting the center line on that. So what you're, what you're trying to do is the intake center line. We'll take a look at uh, comp cams. These are comp, this is a uh, cam card for comp cams, 278. Uh, I think they're extreme energy uh, camshaft. And it has, it'll say on here where to install them. So this is for a four valve. It says in, install the intake cams at 112 center line. So what is that? What is 112 center line? Okay, so this is gonna go through a whole degree, 360 degrees. As it goes all the way, the crank is gonna turn 360 degrees. When it starts from zero degrees, 180 at the bottom, the piston's gonna be all at the bottom, and then it's gonna go all the way back up to the top. So 360. So if our intake center line, they want us to set it at 112, you can see here, zero, at 112, that valve should be wide open. That is going to be at its highest peak at 112 degrees. So if your if your valve is wide open uh, at 116, then you need to retard the camshaft so you get it back to 112. And then as it once it passes 112, and the, we're talking about the crankshaft and everything rotating around, from this point on, the valve is going to start closing. So it actually starts closing the valve. The intake valve actually starts closing before. Uh, bottom dead center and then it travels around so if we go back to our our same cam card where we look at uh, the intake it's going to give you the duration so 242 degrees at 50 thousand so 240 degrees uh, is how long that intake valve is open take 240 degrees uh, divided by 2 uh, 120 so 120 degrees on either side of this center line. So you know that if it's from zero to 112, 120, that means eight degrees prior to top dead center, that intake that intake valve is open, if that makes sense. Uh, 112 is where it's top dead center, but it's already been open. When it hits this point, uh, it's already been open 120 degrees, which means that there's eight degrees left over over here. So, that means your piston is still coming up from the exhaust stroke as your intake valve is opening. So if you open this too soon, you can have contact with uh, the top of your, your piston. Uh, you don't want that. So how much uh, is your piston to valve clearance? That's why you don't, that's why you don't take piston to valve clearance at, uh, when, when it's wide open. You can see in this diagram here, uh, the intake is the intake valve is wide open, but it's way down here. The piston's going to be way down here. It's going to be at 112 degrees. So, if you're looking at your piston to valve clearance, it, it doesn't matter when it if it's at on 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 the top of the the lobe there. You want to. This is where you're concerned with duration is what's going to cause piston to valve contact, um, which is why you it's a good idea to set uh it's a good idea to set your timing because when this actually happens when this whole event occurs is all based on this 112 center line so where is the valve at uh, when it's wide open in comparison to where the piston's at when the piston's at 112 degrees which means it's rotated 112 degrees uh that intake valve should be wide open now in a four valve in a four valve engine, uh, you have 
a camshaft for all your intake valves and you have a camshaft for all your exhaust valves. So you have to set them both. You have to do the timing on both of them. Uh, and that actually is what sets your lobe separation. If you have a dual overhead cam, if you uh, retard the intake or advance the exhaust, uh, you're changing, you're changing the duration or I'm sorry, you're not changing the duration. You're, you're changing the lobe separation angle. Uh, so when you get these cam cards, uh, this one doesn't look like it has the lobe separation angle on there. Um, but that's going to be all, uh, all dependent on with a dual overhead cam on where you set those valves in comparison to each other. I'm sorry, where you set those camshafts in comparison to each other. So, uh, not only do you have to do the intake, you have to do the exhaust, which, uh, you would normally start out with the exhaust and I'll show you why when we do, uh, when I do the video on how to use the tools to do this. Uh, this video is just basically on, on why, uh, why we do it. Uh, if, if you're familiar with this, by all means, you know, just go, go to the next video and it'll have me doing the, I'm going to do the four valve first and then a two valve. So the exhaust stroke is a little bit different. So, uh, and that being, um, when the piston is on its way up is when you look at the degrees. So the degrees from top dead center back down. So 116 degrees, it's going to be actually on this side of the, the 360, uh, circle. So again, if you have 116, uh, degree, center line exhaust center line you rotate that around and when uh the piston is starting to come back up so f this is a top dead center the start of the exhaust stroke uh it, it or i'm sorry it's at bottom dead center the start of the exhaust stroke it's not it's not wide open the camshaft is not wide open this has to travel a little bit more before the camshaft gets wide open and then the piston chases the exhaust and this is where this is where it's very important uh, to make sure that you have proper valve springs because if you don't have proper valve springs, this valve can float, which means it'll separate itself. Uh, it won't stay in contact with the cam as the cam goes by and that valve will float and then this piston will come up and hit it. Uh, you don't want that. So if you don't, if you have weak springs on there, uh, you can get valve float. You can also get uh, a valve hop, which means that the valve will, will, will hit the seat and then hop back open. So it, that's why I said earlier, it's important to have the proper uh, valve spring. Uh, so the piston chases it. Now, if we look down here and we look at our graph of zero degrees, 180 degrees, 116 degrees from, uh, from zero, this is, this is where uh, the valve should be wide open is 116 degrees. And again, duration 240, subtract that. Uh, it's going to have four degrees after uh, top dead center that it's still open. So when you're up here at this point, both these are open. This this exhaust valve is going to stay open uh, for a couple degrees This during this piston. It's going to dwell up there. So that's that's basically the timing of your, of your exhaust. Okay, here's one more shot of... Uh... My awesome drawings, now that I look at it, it looks like a third grade drew them, but I'm honestly, I, I haven't been drinking or anything like that. This is, uh, this is just my extraordinary talent of drawing. Okay, here's the kit that I use. It's a uh, trip flow specialties. Um, the part number is TFS 90000-16 cam degree kit. I think it's about a hundred bucks. Um, it's actually a pretty good kit. Um, I've, I've had pretty good success with it works works pretty well uh, if you follow it comes with directions if you follow directions it's pretty easy um, but if you want to follow my videos like i said after after this video i'm going to degree uh, a four valve so you can follow step by step and if you see any of my other videos you know that i go kind of in excruciating detail uh, step by step but here's the here's the wheel it's got on there it's got uh you know kind of some uh events of happening as you turn as you turn it around you'll see um it's got a thing to attach it to the crank this also works as a tool to i use this a lot to turn the cranks over uh, when i'm building engines so uh, sometimes these can be like uh 30 40 bucks i think this one came with this kit i'm pretty sure it came with this kit 
Um, and then this is pretty important too. You need a stopper, you need a piston stopper. Um, I'm fairly certain this one came with this kit and the reason why I don't remember is because I got this kit quite a while ago. And one thing I do remember is that I had to modify this a little bit to fit. I think it was because of the, if you have heads that have uh, just the four thread and not the nine thread or vice versa, it wouldn't go all the way in there. It had like a more of a beveled edge. So I had to put that on the grinder. You can see how I had to grind away on that thing. Uh, then it screws in there. And, and uh, so you need that so you can set up your top dead center. All of this setting up all of your uh green the cams is all based on top dead center and knowing when that piston is exactly at top dead center so the first step when you do this uh is going to be to find top dead center and then put a mark on this thing and they have like you can see this is probably like a 12 inch wheel uh for those guys that are really into it and they really want to get uh you know exact quarter degrees all this stuff they got like 20 inch wheels that are just huge uh, but this is an inexpensive kit, and this is going to get you uh, pretty dang close, in my opinion. Um, so that's about it. The uh, like I said, the uh, the next videos are going to be on uh, using this tool. On uh, I have a 4.6 uh, dual overhead cam, and I also have a 4.6 single overhead cam. So those are those are the next videos coming. So stay tuned.